So we finally come to the last part of the tutorial. On this video, I'll explain uh, my C++ code. Um, I'll leave the GPU um, uh, code implementation details for another video because I'm still compiling uh, all my material and uh, my libraries so that you're uh, bug free. And uh, for to run the, the C++ code that I'm gonna show you today, um, you need to install OpenCV, uh, CMake, and Git. So I've given you here the link for Git for Windows, which is the most complicated um, uh, one to install. Um, it's pretty straightforward for Linux and Mac. Uh, if you're interested in the MATLAB code, you can just follow this address, and you're going to find the implementation for um, the Lucas Canati framework that I explained in the previous video. But if you're more interested in speed, uh, just follow this video and I'll show you how to compile the code that's uh, available from a website. So, um, first of all, you're gonna need to find my code, the code for the Naya library, which is available on a Bitbucket. So Naya is the name of the library, of the C++ library that, um, that has uh, my implementation of uh, Lucas Canati. And I've, um, I've actually, uh, uh, implement uh, Lucas Canadi with the ESM. So I'll give you some more details on a separate video. You can uh, check my website and I'll uh, have all the details on that. But we're going to go through the code in a bit. I'm just going to show you now how to compile it. So through my website you get the address for the um, for the to clone my git uh, repository. So here I go copy. Okay so now I open git can be either um, the GUI or the uh, bash version. Choose the GUI just because it's easier. You can choose whichever is easiest for you. So here I click on clone existing uh, re repo. Um, I'm just gonna give it the, uh, the address for my repository and uh, the destination folder. I'm just gonna click on, uh, on my desktop. So I click clone. Well, it says my, this is a bug. You can see test. There you go, Copy, uh, copying it into uh, my test folder. Okay, so we're good to go. You can check the folder and see that everything is in there, the code on my repository. So now all we need to do is launch CMake to compile the code. Just before that is a, a quick uh, look at the CMake, CMake lists, which is the text file that CMake is gonna read before compiling. It's where I give my uh, compilation instructions. I'm going to choose here main two DOF because it's a uh, two two DOF stands for two degrees of freedom, which is the example that um, is the most similar to the Lucas Canadi um, um, framework that I've explained in uh, part two. Okay, so now that I've made this uh, modification, all I need to do is uh, feed CMake the the path for my source code just this one and then here for the for the build I'm gonna choose to build it in a separate folder the binaries so I click configure it asks to create the directory I press OK choose the the comp the, the compiler which I have installed which is visual visual studio 2012 um, Express I click finish it goes ahead and check for uh, my open C checks for the 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 path for my OpenCV, and um, that's pretty much it. That's the only uh, dependency I have. But you can see here that it doesn't—it doesn't really find the correct uh, version of my OpenCV, or um, or actually because I have perhaps compiled uh, uh, this code for more than one uh, distribution. You can just go ahead and choose OpenCV directory as uh, the build folder and that should be good enough okay it says it found it with the um, it's a 32-bit uh, architecture I'm gonna click generate to generate the my project so you can check my build folder and there you go you open the project on Visual Studio and now all we uh, need to do is I'm gonna just gonna compile it and release because I'm that sure that this is gonna work so I press F7 to compile and let's see what it gives me generating code linking yep that was all good 
I'm going to choose Naya as my default project and I'm going to run it. So here you should see my face on the webcam. Okay, so before I click, I'm just going to quit. What about game? Okay, so here in my um, original folder, I have a, a file, um, an XML file that uh, contains the parameters for my tracking, uh, for my tracker. So here I'm just going to open it with a, a text uh, editor, like WordPad. And uh, I can choose here the size of the template I'm going to track. I'm just going to choose a small template for now, 100 by 100. And these are some um, old parameters I'm going to explain to you later. You can read the readme file for more information. But the only, um, the only thing you're going to have to change in here are um, the number of uh, active pixels, which is 100 in this case. So that it's uh, exactly matches exactly the framework, and the the maximum number of iterations of the my uh, gradient descent uh, step. Okay, so inside the code, the main two DAF C plus plus, this is where the magic happens. For me to load that um, parameter file, I have unfortunately to I have hard coded it to um, source public. So you need to remove this um, this path and set it right. So then I have to, so I can rerun it. And this time I'm, I'm able to track whatever I have. Okay, so I'm gonna click somewhere on the screen and you can see that I'm, I can track my eye. I can't do much with it because I'm only tracking two degrees of freedom. So eventually if I rotate my head, it's gonna lose track of me. You can press quit to exit and um, so let's go now take a look at the uh, code in more details. So here I'm not going to explain in details what every line of this code does. What I'm going to do uh, rather is um, explain uh, where you can find the is th those uh, specific steps uh, required to um, execute the, um, the Lucas Canadi uh, iteration. So as you remember, um, we had the image warp. Let me see if I can pull up the presentation, PDF file. So as you remember, I'm sure you have access to this as well. Here's a summary of all the um, steps required to execute the Lucas Canadi uh, tracker. So the first is to compute the backward image. The second is to compute the gradient of the backward, di backward image. Uh, the third, third step is to compute the uh, image difference, then mount the Jacobian, and then compute the Hessian and its inverse. Well, first of all, here in the code, this is the main function, a very simple uh, uh, example. This is where I'm going to load my parameters from my file, so the size of the windows, uh, number of... Um, um, so here I, here I have a very um, um, complex um, structure because I, I actually impl I have implemented uh, all the way to deformable models using the same uh, framework, the same code. So you can, uh, uh, perhaps most of this is not really useful for you right now. Uh, this is where I define the images. For example, this is where I create my reference image. Um, I have an option to track in grayscale or in colors. This is where I open uh, my video. Uh, so this is, uh, if I use pound define use video, uh, I use the webcam to capture my video or whatever uh, capturing device. Um, if it's not enabled, then I can load the, my video from a file. Okay. So in this function here, define template is where I select my template. If I follow it, um, oh wait, this is not QT. Let me see how I do this. It's control D now. Sorry, I haven't used uh, Visual Studio in a long time. Define template is set in tracking auxiliary.cpp. And uh, basically all it does is crop a portion of the current image, as you can see here. So I have two um, sections. One is for grayscale and the other is for colored images. It's because OpenCV has a different way of accessing the, the images. Uh, 
if uh, you're tracking, if you're using color or grayscale images. So there you go. That's all it does. Then next, I'm going to in initialize this track tracker structure, which is um, declared here. So this Naya tracker here is the is where I have implemented the, my tracker, and this is where you're going to find all the the functions that implement uh, these steps here. Um, all right. So this is where I initialize my tracking parameters. So um, as you can see here, um, I have predefined, uh, so this is the two DOF. Uh, it has four parameters, but in fact, I'm only going to use uh, the two last uh, entries on my uh, parameter vector. Um, this is uh, uh, just a, a choice uh, that I've made to simplify the code for the two, three, and four DOF um, uh, transformation models. So don't, uh, there is no specific reason why I've uh, chosen this. Uh, uh, I've chosen this. So this is a tracking loop. It's a while loop that uh, it breaks when I press Q to exit, and uh, it basically grabs a frame from my my, um, my grabber. So OpenCV does that for me, and then I do. I'm gonna execute all these operations in uh, run to DOF, which is a sub function of my uh, tracker class. Okay, let me see if I can do this. Uh, go to definition. Okay. So here you go. Until a maximum number of iterations is uh, reached, I'm going to compute uh, the, uh, the, the back warped image, which is here, and back warped to DOF. And let's see in details how I do that. Well, you can see here, I'm going to fill uh, this uh, dummy uh, matrix, which is uh, bas basically there are two matrices uh, with the size of my image. And here it contains the mapped coordinates of the pixels of the X and Y coordinates of the pixels on my reference image. So for every pixel on my reference image, this uh, these uh, matrices dummy map X and dummy map Y, they contain the mapped um, X and Y coordinates of the uh, of every pixel on my reference image. And since the transformation model is just uh, the sum of an offset, you can see here clearly. Um, the position where I sum the two uh, tracking parameters, so the two transformation parameter parameters. And uh, later, I use the remap function, the remap OpenCV function. You can look on online on the OpenCV documentation to see more details of how it works. Basically, I feed the image, and then I feed the um, this uh, other. Uh, this is the back warped image, which I call current warp. And the two, um, the positions of my, uh, of the map pixels. And then this other um, parameter here is the type of interpolation. And by default of, of, you, of musing on all my code, the linear interpolation. So it's zero, if I remember well, it's zero for nearest neighbors interpolation, one for the linear, and three for cubic interpolation. And these are some padding and uh, some extra parameters that are not that important right now. Well, then I need to uh, do the same for the mask. Uh, if I'm using masks, if, for example, I'm, um, I'm turning off portions of my image, this is uh, this becomes important. Well, going back to the uh, oops, this is a place where I have to go back to my. code okay so this next is the computation of the gradient which is implemented using Sobel there you go so it's just a basic Sobel operator convolution you can read the details of this uh, function online okay and then um, I'm going to skip these uh, uh, these functions here because they are uh, they are regarding the occlusion maps, which is a functionality that we uh, we haven't discussed so far. And we're going to skip directly to the the building of the Jacobian and the computation of the image difference. And I'm going to choose uh, the Mount Jacobian for colored images just because it's uh, oh pardon, I'm going to choose the grayscale. 
because it's easier to understand. And uh, and this is where for all pixels on my uh, on my reference image, I am going to compute. Uh, I'm going to multiply the gradient. Well, first of all, here I compute uh, the uh, the difference between uh, the um, the current warp and the template. So the difference between the the back warped image and the template. And uh, and this is the place where I uh, mount the Jacobian, which, if you remember well, it's just simply uh, the stacked uh, uh, the stacked uh, gradients of my reference of my back warped image. Um, so this second term here, which is the gradient of the template, is in fact the implementation of the ESM. So you uh, all you basically need to do is to sum the gradient of the template image to obtain the, um, the ESM optimization for the Lucas Canati. And that's how I built the, um, this is where I built, I mount my Jacobian. So this term here corresponds to this matrix SD. Okay, so coming back to the final step, which is the update of my tracking parameters. And this is the simplest uh, function of them all. If you look in here, all I do is compute uh, the uh, negative of the inverse. So this is the pin more, more uh, pseudo inverse, which is uh, the most inefficient way to implement this. But um, this is just for uh, for the sake of um, of readability. So if you un so you understand the readers who are not familiar with uh, this type of a tracking method, they can easily understand uh, where this equation comes from. And basically, this is just uh, the the inverse of the uh, of the Hessian, right here. I'm highlighting right now. Uh, multiplied by the transpose of the Jacobian, multiplied by the image difference, and this is exactly equivalent to the this equation right here. Okay, this is exactly where you find the the equivalent. Okay, so if the sum, uh, if the the norm, the sum of all of the sum of the norm of this uh, increment delta is below a certain threshold, then I'm gonna halt my, uh, I'm gonna cut short my iteration loop, and uh, I'm gonna say my tracking has converged for a specific frame. And here is where I update my parameters. Uh, notice the negative here, which corresponds to the negative here, negative sign. So I didn't put it here just because. And this two here is another, uh, it, j it only exists here because of the ESM. So this is, uh, this is, this doesn't correspond exactly to this equation here. I'm sorry. It has the two here, which indicates the, which is uh, because of the ESM uh, modification I've made to the code. Okay. So uh, this is how the, the magic happens, and uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video and you have succeeded in compiling it. And I'm gonna show you in the next videos how to run the, how to derive the tracker with uh, a deformable model. Okay, stay tuned.